Where yell next vault corrupt. When Yellowstone erupts again, which it inevitably will, it won't matter whether people live in Bozeman, Montana, or Cody, Wyoming, they'll still die. But new seismology research has finally pinpointed the exact location on the ground where the eruption will occur. If you want to die from magma instead of ash, the northeastern part of the park is the place to go. Hikers need not worry, a team from the United States Geological Survey, USGS, which published its report last week in Nature Geoscience, also measured the percentage of rock in Yellowstone's magma reservoir that is actually molten. They found that none of it is even close to the level that would allow an eruption to occur. When Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, much of the top of the mountain broke away and slid down its slopes in a massive landslide. What was left behind was a caldera. This crater-like depression in the rock isn't fed by a narrow vent like most volcanoes. Instead, a large pool of magma sits just beneath a shallow layer of surface rock. That's what's lurking beneath the surface of Yellowstone National Park. But unlike Mount St. Helens, the Yellowstone caldera doesn't have just one magma reservoir beneath it. It has four. The Yellowstone caldera has a long history. It has erupted at least three times in the past, most as recently as 70,000 years ago. Previous eruptions have left the northeastern region relatively untouched, but that will change with the next eruption. To find the magma, the USGS team used a network of stations that measure the conductivity of materials deep underground. This method, called magnetotellurics, relies on the fact that solid rock is very resistant to electrical currents. But once the rock begins to melt, electrical currents can flow through it. So the magma shows up on magnetotellurics measurements as pockets of high underground conductivity. These magma spots aren't actually underground pools like aquifers, but rather a honeycomb mix of solid and molten rock. As long as the percentage of melt stays below 40%, the pockets in the honeycomb can't build up enough pressure to erupt out of the ground. The largest melt fraction found in the new study was just 18%, and that's not likely to increase much in the coming decades. Although the USGS has identified pockets of molten rhyolite beneath all of Yellowstone, magma conduits connect pockets of molten rhyolite in the northeast with deeper reservoirs of molten basalt. Magma made from rhyolite produces the characteristic volcanic ash, but basalt is the real driver of eruptions because it flows more easily. That means it can channel heat from deep within the earth, pushing molten rhyolite to the surface. The volume of magma beneath Yellowstone is now greater than in previous eruptions. It's hard to know how much magma will still be there when the caldera finally erupts. <laughs>